Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about enhanced oil recovery in unconventional shale reservoirs. This is a case study in the Montagny and the Duvernay using gas cycling EOR or gas cycling enhanced oil recovery. Before we get to the content, please be sure to like this video, subscribe for more content in the oil and gas industry and professional development topics, and be sure to comment on the video so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. Be sure to hit the notification bell, that way you can get my notices every Friday and Sunday. Every Friday is a soft skills special, and every Sunday is a technical review, such as this video. Well, I hope you enjoy the content. Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about experimental measurements of Motney and Duvernay gas cycling EOR, or GC EOR. This is written by Brent Thomas of ResOpStrategies.com. Michael Piwar, Medi Nuruzi, William Gibb, Juan Marine, and Huang Wei Zhang from Stratum Reservoir. I bolded the objective, and it's a pretty lengthy one, but I also gave some background information below. This is to develop an experimental procedure to incorporate mechanisms of GCEOR, phase behavior, interfacial tension change, swelling, viscosity reduction, and residual shrinkage in the presence of porous media possessing prop hydraulic fractures and matrix. The importance of rock and fluid properties is investigated along with operating pressure, injection gas composition, and levels of primary depletion. Experimental oil flux is measured and scaled to forecast field production rates based on oil field frac data. The paper provides an extensive literature review on potential EOR and shale reservoirs. The presence of hydraulic fractures in very low perm rock can induce very large pressure gradients. Unlike conventional EOR schemes where flood front differential pressure gradients on the order of one psi per foot, the differential pressure gradients induced are in nano Darcy, hydraulically fracked porous media, and are orders of magnitude larger. There are three flow regimes recognized in the flow within the matrix due to the pressure gradient. There's flow within the fracks due to pressure gradient, which contributes very little. That's known as matrix to matrix. There's fluid flow from the matrix into the frac during production, that's known as frac to frac. And then there's fluid flow from the frac to the matrix during injection, or matrix to frac. Here is a chart that shows the critical nature of GCEOR, especially from matrix to frac, where you have your matrix pressure shown up here in black, and then you have your frac pressure that's pretty low that's shown down here in the red and then you have your transition zone between the matrix and the fractures. This is where GCEOR comes in. Now I'll talk about the description and application of equipment and processes. For porous media experiments, due to the very low perm of the porous media, standard axial flow experiments were dismissed. In order to have sufficient hydrocarbon pore volumes, or HCPV, to analyze composition and densities on produced fluids and to satisfy reasonable mass balance requirements, Experimental dead volumes equal to approximately 10% of HCPV were required. Thus, with dead volumes of 20 milliliters, an HCPV of approximately 200 milliliters would be desired. This would necessitate a length of approximately 20 inches of 4 inch diameter, full diameter core samples with 6% porosity and 20% initial water saturation. So this is shown on the right over here where this is the schematic of the porous media and the flow pattern of GCEOR experiments. So just to emphasize that standard axial flow experiments were dismissed because of very low perm. The experimental hydraulic fractures ranged in the aperture size from less than 3 30 seconds of an inch on one end of the core segment to 1 8 of an inch at the other end of the core segment. The slot slice expands slightly from one end to another the separate core segments were then stacked end to end and filled with representative frac sand for the profit. Sufficient core length was used to provide an HCPV of approximately equal to 10 times the dead volume of the apparatus. The porous media is placed inside the sleeve, allowing high pressure gas and reservoir oil to be injected radially from the outside in or from the out inside out. Radio flow from the matrix into one or more of the slots representing hydraulic fractures is created using a positive displacement pump to pressurize the periphery of the porous media, flow through the matrix into the slots and into the well. And then a fluid from the fracks 
controlled either by a back pressure regulator or by positive displacement pump, which can be controlled according to a constant rate of pressure depletion. One to three fracs could be activated by opening or closing the separate valves connected into the slots, to the separate slots. So this is shown on figure four over here of the stack radio flow core before assembly. As for the procedure goes, the core stack assembly is mounted in the oven and the gas crude oil is flowed radially from outside to the center line fracture and the pressure increased to a nominal 1000 PSI as the pressure is increased to a reservoir temperature. The crude oil is injected continuously for approximately four weeks to restore wettability. Nearing the end of four weeks of restoration, the pressure is increased to reservoir pressure by increasing the back pressure. And once reservoir pressure is attained, the injection of reservoir fluid is started. This is continued for another two weeks or more, depending on the injection rate, which can depend on the radial pressure gradient induced. The Institute oil perm at initial water saturation, the reservoir temperature and pressure with overboard and stress is calculated. Once the measured affluent GOR is equal to the injection side GOR, the core stack is judged ready to commence primary depletion. As far as timing goes, figure five, so shown over here, is a field scenario that was used for scaling the lab testing time. So at the 4650 foot long horizontal well, there are about 25 fracture stages. And with 24 intervals along the well, the average distance between fractures was approximately 194 feet. So from the no-flow axis of symmetry between fractures, that distance would be 97 feet, as shown in the figure here. The manner used to scale the experimentation was based upon the comparison of the distance between the no-flow axis of symmetry in the field scenario and the maximum distance for flow in the lab. The diameter for the full diameter core was three and a half inches. Tap that distance, corrected for the minimum width of the slot would be one and 11 16 inches. The scaling factor was approximately 0 0.0015. And a five-year primary depletion in the field would be scaled to 63 hours of primary depletion in the lab. Here are the data and results tables. So these are all seven projects shown over here with the oil perm, fluid GOR, your API, your stock tank API, your viscosity, your reservoir temperature and pressure and bubble point pressure. And then you have the length of your core or your core segments here with your total pore volume, matrix pore volume, frac pore volume, initial water saturation in the matrix, and the total hydrocarbon pore volume, as well as the length. So table two is the disposition of core segments for gas cycling for EOR testing. And then table one gives you the range of rock props, rock and fluid props. Here are more data and results from figure six and figure seven shown on the left and right respectively. Figure six shows that there's minimal pressure difference between the frac pressure and the matrix pressure. These pressure histories are recorded assuming an 800 nanodarcy in situ liquid perm porous media. And then there's a comparison of puff two pressure for matrix and fracture, which is provided for projects five and seven shown in that slide before. So in, this is in figure seven. The pressure difference between the matrix and the frac is much greater for lower rock perm. Here's some data and results for our oil recovery at different gas cycles, which is shown in figure eight. There's some incremental oil rec recovery from 50 to about 85% for each subsequent gas cycle. And then you have primary depletion you have primary depletion and then your and then your huff at different at different cycles shown that the more gas that's been injected the more hydrocarbon pore volumes you end up getting figure 10 represents compositional changes shown over here in the produced flash liquids showing an accumulation of intermediate components in the produced fluid and then the C minus intermediates are produced during the early stages of the GCEOR. The last puff cycle shows a net decrease in the C6 minus components as though the oil produced later has been previously extracted of the C6 minus components. 
So lighter components comes at the earlier times of your gas cycling. And then as with subsequent cycles, at with subsequent times, you're going to get your heavier components. So figure 11 shows the accompanying decrease in density of the produced hydrocarbon liquid superimposed on the cumulative recovery. The increase in density from the oil from the last two puff cycles corroborates what was observed compositionally in figure 10. So you have your increase in stock tank API. So you're getting your heavier ends in the later cycles. Figure 12 shows the peak production rates calculated using the measured experimental fluxes. Maximum differential pressure gradients are also shown. So this is figure 12 with your peak pressure gradients as they increase for each puff cycle and your peak production rates vary. Figure 13 is a summary of the six tests test performed as part of GCEOR design work shown for project number four that was shown in table one. So as the degree of primary depletion decreases, then there's a net improvement in the GCOR performance. So in other words, the earlier you start your GCOR, you have a better oil production or a better recovery. So figure 14 shows the GCOR incremental recovery versus the total gas injected. There is a reasonable trend correlating recovery to the amount of gas that, that was injected. So at high, there's higher gas injection at more depletion as opposed to, or there's lower gas injection at higher depletion versus, versus your 25% depletion. And there's also some soak time as well. Some benefits to soak time. Figure 15 shows insight to the best design of the application, since even though the GCOR performance is not as good for the 50% primary depletion scenario as it is for the 25% depletion, there is more oil recovered on primary depletion. The total primary depletion in GCEOR is almost as good as the 50% depletion scenario, but the gas volume required is significantly less, or it's less than half. So this is shown in figure 15. where your total cum recovery is a lot more in the 25% depletion as opposed to the 75 and 50% depletion with some benefits to the soak time. Figure 16 shows peak production rates that were extrapolated on the basis of measured fluxes. So again, at the 25% depletion, you're getting a better peak production as opposed to the other tests where at 50% depletion. There's some other testing done with respect to some of these projects where there was first compact miscibility of injection gas. So at lower perms, you were getting some higher recoveries here compared to your higher perm. The percent of OIP was much less, but that was because their primary depletion was a lot more. Whereas the, in figure 18, you have the effect of gas, injection gas composition, where your rich gas, you're getting a lot more. But then you had, you didn't have as much primary depletion to begin with. This is bridging the lab versus the field scale. You use numerical simulation. This is some of the incremental oil recoveries you've gotten from the different cycles from simulation versus the experiment. And here's the varying flowing bottom hole pressures as well for each cycle. Figure 32 shown over here, and I believe this is a 25% depletion. The predicted incremental GCR recovery if the same model was built on lab data and the subsequent tuned scale model. The predicted incremental oil recovery in this scenario was around 30%. So that shows the benefits of GCEOR, or the benefits that can happen with GCEOR and unconventionals. So 
So there are various conclusions shown in the paper and I'll go through them line by line. GCOR testing has been conducted in porous media with in-situ oil perm ranging from 20 nanodarcies up to two microdarcies. Unique radio flow equipment with slots representing fracs enable low perm core flow testing at the time constant equal to the axial flow testing rock in, in terms of millidarcies. More testing continues with porous media exhibiting in-situ perm down to less than 20 nanodarcies. Pressure can play a dominant role in GCEOR. It appears that there is an optimal injection pressure for both oil recovery and gas handling. Pressures too low or too high seem to result in less GCEOR, oil recovery, and worse gas utilization. Injection gas composition may play an important role in GCOR performance. GCOR recovery correlates well in some cases with gas volume injected. Huff time may compensate for the non-optimal operating pressure in some reservoirs. Shorter huff times with more cycles seem to require more total gas without increasing oil recovery relative to longer huff times. Less reservoir depletion may result in accelerated GCEOR and better gas utilization. Less depletion during primary injection appears in some cases to increase the recovery factor. Properly designed GCOR may approach gas storage with added EOR upside. The role of geology has been shown to dominate in at least one GCEOR project. Rock crops must be considered in GCOR design where porous media character is important. This testing is an available means to where real, whereby the role of microscale geology can be quantified. And utilizing reservoir simulation is an important step to bridge the lab data and forecasting GCO, GCEOR performance in the field. A well-designed lab scale simulation model will reduce the uncertainty of the field scale models to predict the effect of GCOR and ultimate recovery. And as a result, an economic analysis would be more accurate. I really thank everyone for their time in this present, for listening to this presentation. If you all can just go to my Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter accounts, they're all at Yoga Sri Pradhan, the same handle. Feel free to connect me, connect with me on those platforms. And again, please be sure to like this video, subscribe, and comment on the video so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. And be sure to hit the notification bell as these technical reviews come every Sunday and the professional development reviews come every Friday. Thanks again for your time and I hope to see you in the next video.